Hello. Um, hi, Kay. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah. Please. What's up, Antonia? Do uh, you want the long or the short introduction? I want anything that you see fit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> everything. Uh, so in, in, in between everything. Damn. All right. Uh, nice <laughs> to meet everyone. I'm Kay. Uh, everyone here in Silicon Valley, especially in the technology uh, enterprise software ecosystem, knows me as Enterprise Guy. Uh, so you, you don't necessarily see uh, K on there, but uh, I'll tell you the story, the logic, the strategy around Enterprise, enterprise Guy, how it got started. So uh, my story started more than four years ago, and what happened was uh, I used to work in financial services industry, and I was a geek when it came to everything finance and investing. And what happened was uh, one day I realized that I had to quit and leave, and so I quit and left because of conflict of interest. They wouldn't let me invest my money the way I wanted to or chase my passion. So the moment I left, I started this little tiny investment club here in Silicon Valley. Started off with just three people at a cafe. And next thing you know, I said, hey, you know what? I love teaching and I'm going to do this for as long as I can. So fast forward more than four years later today, uh, I now get upwards of 100 to 125 people uh, coming out every Sunday just to kind of hear about all the geeky things I have to say about investing and stuff like that. So pretty active in that space. Uh, but that journey really led me to learn a lot of things, reinforce my investment skill set, learn about technology, and eventually meet a lot of people, which came down to two people that I would say changed my life. The first person that I met was a local meetup.com partner in which this gentleman had a 30,000 user platform. And he reached out to me and said, okay, you seem like a nice regular operator in the space. Uh, can you uh, help me operate events? And I said, hey, why not? You got 30,000 members. Next thing you know, I started operating his platform. We grew today to 67,000 members through acquisition. And we, wow. we need to host more events to kind of engage with the audience, right? It kind of builds up the platform. And what happened was before COVID, I was hosting all these events. It got to a point where we were hosting technology events. And it got to a point where I was meeting about 400 people in person each month. And that experience made me realize that, you know, hey, this is like Hill, Silicon Valley human capital all over here, smart mm -hmm. people. Why don't they remember my name? <laughs> so uh, that's the origins of Enterprise Guy, the story I like to tell, because it made me branded myself for the purpose of uh, you know, doing well in business. Mm -hmm. So that stage name, as cheesy as it is today, Enterprise Guy, it helps me on the B2B side with enterprise software. Uh, the future is you know, enterprise software is going to be big, but it allows me to get every enterprise software executive to think of Enterprise Guy when they say enterprise software. Mm -hmm. And then as for the B2C side of things, uh, there's this whole rise of like the influencer technology stack, which I think Toucan plays really well into it uh, in a sense that, you know, on the enterprise side, you have Okta that does identity access management, which is like yeah. corporate identity. But now on the consumer side, which is like, you know, the Facebook, the Instagram, the Snapchat and all that, things like Instagram and Twitter are giving social identity verification, verified accounts, right? Twitter verified profile to consumers. And so what that basically means is that we're moving, the internet is evolving and moving towards a world where we're seeing, uh, uh, you know, digital identity being verified on the consumer side and people are going to start investing more into the internet, not just investing into Twitter's platform, but the internet overall. So mm -hmm. we're going to see a lot more rise of influencers, which I think are the early digital pioneers of identity for consumers. And I think yeah. Toucan is going to be a, an awesome tool uh, to help those influencers engage with their audience. Because you, it's not just about getting followers anymore. It's about truly engaging with your mm -hmm. audience. And this is an extremely powerful tool to be able to engage with your audience. And they don't know it yet. It's undiscovered. I personally think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, then so, let, me, let me ask you, yeah. how do you engage with your audience yeah. on Toucan? So, so, so you know, I, I think Toucan has really saved me, but I have been underutilizing it because I'm still kind of adjusting in this COVID-19 environment, given that it's been a year already, I'm still adjusting. <laughs> uh, but Aren't we you, all? But you guys are, yeah, but you guys are constantly evolving, and I'm seeing, like, new features uh, all day on here, so I'm getting pretty excited. Uh, the one yeah. feature that I'd love to see moving forward is a static uh, uh, link for myself, so that could help me scale these events. Mm -hmm. So uh, your question is, you know, I came from hosting in-person events to hosting uh, now digital events, and now Toucan is allowing me to engage my audience. Your question was, uh, how am I using the tool today? Or... Yeah, to engage with your audience. I mean, you have a brand, yeah, yeah. and you're an yeah, influencer so my... of some sort. 
Yeah, I, I, I would say I, so, you know, complete disclosure, I, I'm not like a super big influencer. I start off <laughs> locally. And so I, I more, more local geographic Silicon Valley people know me. Uh, but now sure. it's like I'm forced to be on the internet just like everyone else because of this COVID flip of a coin or whatever situation. So the way it's helping me today is that I understand that there are engagement tools out there. And this is one of them. So it, what is engaging? Like, you know, you could go on LinkedIn, Instagram and post stuff to get followers, but that's just a following, right? That's just a number. Mm -hmm. Engagement is like what we have right here. You and I are having a genuinely engaged conversation, right? And it's only through purely investing into engagements like this in time. Mm -hmm. They say, you know, real time builds real relationships. So I love to invest the real time. And so mm -hmm. this tool gives me that real engagement and real time to do that, right? And it's kind of cool to see like David and, and uh, uh, Ethan in the other chat room chatting as well. So. <laughs> It gives me that that social feeling, and so uh, I love this tool like very deeply in a sense that I always tell. I sound like a broken record. You're going to hear this, but it, okay. you know it, it's it's truly in my mind. Uh, Zoom again, uh, or, or humans operate in a continuum of things, and mm -hmm. we tend to go from one side to the other frequently. And so in the real world, we would go to like seminars and webinars, right? And then we'll flip to the other side of the continuum and go into like a network event. So I like to label that as humans naturally go from structured events to unstructured events. Yeah. If you analyze you know, human interaction at scale, which I have, right? And so Zoom has been the perfect digitization of uh, 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 digitizing human structured events, which is one to many and is boring, right? But now in this mm -hmm. COVID environment, we have Toucan, which is digitizing the unstructured events, which is the networking, right? It's like, hey, we attend a concert and we're, you know, it's one to many. We listen to them, we listen to them sing or lecture or whatever. Then we break out, we go in the back, get some coffee and we network. Mm -hmm. So that component is seriously missing in today's day and age, right? Especially mm -hmm. with COVID. Mm -hmm. And that's why I perceive that this is an amazing tool for event hosts like myself, or you could say upcoming emerging influencers who want to engage with their audience to, you know, build a deeper relationship with them. Because let's just mm -hmm. be real. You can't, you can't really build a solid relationship without that social aspect, right? Mm -hmm. With just Zoom. And then the other one is uh, uh, you can't just build a relationship by sharing posts on LinkedIn and Twitter. And <laughs> well, Twitter, you probably can't because it's reading, right? Core and stuff, but for Instagram <laughs> and stuff, it just, this takes it to a whole new level and it's the next frontier of influencer engagement. Mm -hmm. So I view this as a powerful tool that also is, should be part of the influencer toolbox in which most don't know yet. So we got to go out there and get them to know. <laughs> I completely agree with you. Couldn't agree more. Um, may I ask how you found Toucan initially? Sure, sure. Uh, so the way I found Toucan was through, so to finish my story about earlier, so <laughs> now you know that I'm the enterprise guy, the cheesy stage name enterprise guy. What ultimately happened next was as I was teaching one day, uh, a VC attended my lecture. And the guy, I guess he enjoyed my two-hour lecture. Uh, he gave me a cold call after and said, Kay, I want you to be my investment partner. And I didn't think no would be an answer he would take. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, sure, you know, where did I sign? And then the, the rest was history. We built a relationship. And so I started investing into startups. And then eventually, one of my uh, VC friends, Sean Kung, over at ABA Ventures, mm -hmm. uh, he said, hey, you got to check out this uh, interesting startup. It's, uh, it's being built by two Stanford college kids, and they're doing something really cool. And I said, hey, why not? Let's hop on a call. And then the rest was history there. <laughs> so that's how I came across Toucan. It's a, it's a heartwarming story about friendship in the COVID-19 era. Um, yeah. <laughs> how have you been using Toucan yourself? Like, What types of events have you yeah. found to be particularly engaging on the platform? Yeah. Yeah. So the platform has significantly evolved since when I got on into it be, uh, in the beginning. Today mm -hmm. I could share stuff. And so the events are kind of, we're just kind of molding it to the situation, right? So in the very early days as I was hosting events, right? Remember, I used to host these technology network events and that collapsed because of COVID. So initially when I got on Toucan, there was no like, you know, presentation features in which we do have it now. But in the beginning, I was using it more for just networking. Mm -hmm. So what I did was, remember, I have that 60,000 meetup platform. I sent an invite to everyone, and then everyone hops on, and then we just come in here, and we're like, whoa, like COVID-19 environment, let's start networking. 
So that was like a really cool, like, you know, initial use case that we discovered through the tool because it was very mm -hmm. simple. People could pop on. And now it's getting even more exciting because, well, you know, when I'm hosting these events uh, every two weeks now, these social investor networking events or whichever, uh, people will come in and it just, the, the conversations evolve because today I could share my screen and they could share their screen yeah. and then you can even announce. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like, whoa, like, like they, they just didn't expect like, you know, they, like that you could come in here, socialize, network and all that. And then someone could present something and anyone could present something. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely evolved to like, uh, because my audience are investors, right? So they come in they want to meet other investors and it's very easy for me to present ideas like, Hey, I'm bullish on this stock. Mm -hmm. Let me share my screen. And next thing you know, I'm sharing my stock market screen and then we're looking at stock and discussing that. And they could do that in every other bubble too. So I think mm -hmm. that's been an amazing social use case that helps me uh, as an influencer, business operator, investor, whichever, build up my network, build up my business, engage with my audience and, you know, try to continue to do what I do. So in a, yeah. in a similar vein, what are your favorite features and what, how do those features make the Toucan experience better than any other platform? The number one favorite feature. Okay. Is we are talking to each other right now and someone else is in here socializing in another bubble. Back then when I was hosting networking events, remember I met 400 people each month and each event had 100 people in there. Yeah. Even though we bring 100 people into a room, they always broke out into little bubbles like this. So one of my most favorite features is it made me feel like I'm still networking. That mm -hmm. is like the number one thing uh, that I, I really feel about this platform. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm in a networking event, which I don't feel at Zoom. At Zoom, it's like, all right, you know what? They can't see me. Camera's off. I'm going to be in my bed, and I'm going to watch this. <laughs> so yeah. this is like the, the change right here. And, and I think the most recent innovation that you have on this platform, especially with the presentation, I think that's really awesome as well because uh, it makes it really easy to share ideas on the fly with strangers that you just network today. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're evolving the conversational dynamics that we've never seen before. But the one thing that I've seen, the new feature that I've seen that was really cool was the mobile feature in which I saw Ethan was being, he was in, I think he's in Colorado, whichever state. Yep. And he was just outside showing us the snow while we're networking. So <laughs> I, I'm pretty excited to, to see how, how you guys evolve this platform. It's going to be too cool. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. That's something that it was a long time coming and, a lot of people, including yourself, asked us about when that was when that was coming. So we were excited to offer that. I'm um, curious to hear if you have any feedback or if you've heard any reactions to the platform from people who've attended your events and what has that been like? Yeah, man. Okay, so early days, uh, because it was just new to everyone, they were just like, whoa. Like, I, I think it, it definitely, in this environment, right, where like, hey, we can't socialize. They come in, they're just like, whoa, like you can move around. Now, given that, you know, there's different age groups out there and different age groups absorb the technology in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, the younger demographic, I would argue, uh, they geek out to it a lot, right? They really like it. The older demographic, um, they, they like it as well. And, it's, and, they, and they're kind of surprised that it's easy for them. Yeah. Right. So uh, and I'm sorry, your, your, your question was... Uh, if you could refresh my memory, I'm kind of like the reactions, like the, the reactions, yeah, the reactions from right? your guests. I don't think I've gotten a negative reaction. That's probably the, the that's what the we love to hear. <laughs> like not, not a single negative one. It's just like, wow, like this platform's got potential. Right. And again, the highlight is no one said, not a single person said anything bad about Toucan. And, mm -hmm. and you know, the different types of people that I met from like teachers to, other event hosts and stuff like that. They're like, how do I get my hands on it? <laughs> um, yeah. So, and, and then because my audience is primarily investors, mm -hmm. they, they just, they've loved like on the fly lectures or presentations that I could give to them. Like right, right, right now. And then like, Hey, we just met, but let me just share with you my dynamic ideas. And if you don't like it, you can hop to the next bubble. <laughs> sure. So nothing but positivity. Oh, excellent. That's, that's really great to hear. Um, uh, my next question is more about you. 
How has this period and operating entirely online changed, if at all, your perspective towards hosting your own events, even when the world gets back to normal? Oh, man. So my perspective, uh, in your question is like, how did this tool change my perspective as well as this environment, the COVID-19 environment? Yeah. I mean, if you want to center it on Toucan, then by all means do. But yeah. I, I also just mean in general, how has operating online and engaging with your community online impacted the way that you're going to think about engaging with that community mm. once, you know, things get back to normal, whatever that means. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so as an investor, right, I have to think about this question a lot in terms of like, when do we get back to normal? So I like to really think critically and, and, and maturely and objectively and say that I think this whole COVID-19 uh, event will probably last throughout the year, right? Even when the vaccines, is going, you, you got to think about the distributions of the vaccines and all that. Yeah. So the way it's changed me fundamentally is now I'm digitally oriented myself uh, in a sense that I think it's really, uh, you know, the way it made me realize is, I think of it like this. There's the real economy, the financial economy, and then the digital economy, right? Mm -hmm. And when I was hosting my events, it was in the real economy, right? And, and then when we had this COVID situation, the governments had to do their thing and print a lot of money, which juiced, which juiced the financial economy, right? And then, but then there's the digital economy. So I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm explaining to you as an investor, there's the yeah. digital economy, which now got juiced by the government financial money printing as well as now the whole entire population is needs to adjust to be online. So mm -hmm. everyone had to zo or learn Zoom overnight, and that's why Zoom went to $100 billion in valuation. <laughs> oh, I'm talking about everyone in the world, okay? Everyone in the world. So uh, fundamentally, I think about the habits of human beings as well as how I historically operate. Because historically when I operate, I had to always think about, a, a good, I think a good leader pays attention to their, their audience or their followers and mm -hmm. what their followers want. And so I think about that, and I can see that we have all fundamentally evolved into probably a different thinking nowadays. So, yeah. so I, I think moving forward, I'm going to be diving deeper into this digital economy, uh, considering of what I know. And I think you know, uh, if you apply it to like the brick and mortar businesses out there, they kind of uh, got disrupted, right? They can't really operate. And so mm -hmm. I just feel that more people are going to jump into the digital economy and going to be even more online. And so I view that this is going to be one of those powerful tools that I have to use, two can is what I'm talking about, in order to engage with the next level of audience demand, mm -hmm. right? Because if everyone's on Zoom today, they kind of get like Zoom fatigue and tired. It feels tedious. They're going to demand something new, a new experience when it comes to socializing in this you know, environment that we're all dealt with today, COVID-19. Definitely. I, yeah. I totally hear what you're saying, and I think that it's very well thought out. Um, mm -hmm. Hi, Michelle. Michelle just, just jumped hey, in Michelle. to chat yeah, with us. Anyone jump in and have a conversation. Yeah, exactly. This is, this is how it works. Um, I, Michelle, I'm sure that you have, you have questions for Kay as well. I've kind of run through the basic questions. Now we're just having a little chat. And something that I'd really like to know, Kay, is what do you feel like you've gotten out of the Toucan community? Like being a part of our community here, not just using our platform, but meeting other people who are involved with us too. I would say since I started going on Toucan, I've met more people than I ever have before and engaged in a level that's geographically, well, previously not as possible, right? Yeah. So, so I, I think you know, just this this entire time on on Toucan being part of the community, like it, it was really great meeting a lot of people in this environment, and just kind of geeking out to the technology and being able to share ideas. Like I met I met a lot of investors in here that I was able to share ideas on the fly. So mm -hmm. it it's just like the next level of like dynamic conversations. Uh, so it's been really positive. I love hearing that. Thank you. <laughs> If, if anything, if anything, we want to cultivate this really rich, really uh, friendly and welcoming community environment. And we're lucky to, to have you and to get to see you every week at our social. Yeah. Um, 
but even beyond that, I'm glad that I'm glad that you feel like you've made friends and connections because I certainly have. I couldn't tell if you know everybody else was as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Michelle, uh, that, do you guys, sorry for being late, but um, anyway, you are a very, very good hand. <laughs> 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 and I was, well, not, I, I was actually for a period of time thinking, no, I'm not being too red. Then you're around, so I just want to say hello. Um, did did nice. Antonia? Did you did you talk about the how to little discussion we've had? You know, how to maintain a community from LinkedIn to Tucan? How oh, to? Yeah. We we've touched on that um, briefly, but Kay, that is that is a really good question. Um, how do you integrate your LinkedIn network and activate your your network and bring those folks to Toucan? Like, how do Toucan and LinkedIn kind of work together for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not just LinkedIn. LinkedIn is one of the platforms I leverage, but uh, so I mean, technologically speaking. Uh, it all starts with that link, right? Because remember, I, I, I've hosted lots of events before and I know that people don't read flyers and you can send out all these things. They just kind of read headlines, mm -hmm. right? And they want, you want everything to be completely simplified for the broader audience. So I always know that you can capture a bigger audience if you simplify everything. So it all starts with that link. So what I do in terms of like hosting events on Toucan is, uh, let's say I have a platform network on LinkedIn and meetup.com. And what I do is I create a simple event on Toucan and then it gives me a link. Then I take that link, I, I, I integrate it with my marketing and then I send the marketing out. And then it could be like, you know, that link could be on an email, whichever, then people come in, they sign up for it. And then we host the event. So that's the, you know, the, the exact process that I, I've been using it for. Now, some innovation that would be super awesome is if we get that static link because that will allow me to scale because one, one of the bottlenecks or friction I, I experienced today is uh, as I host events, uh, I have to always adjust the link. But I know you guys got that coming. And so once that comes out, I, I, I don't know. I think sky's the limit. Because you're going you're gonna to empower like all these influencers to have a permanent link. And they're going to want to host and just engage with their crowd. Mm -hmm. Never before. Because I kid you not, I, last Sunday I was on a Zoom event with like other, other entrepreneurs. And we had like our, our event, and then everyone was asking like, "Hey, Corey, Corey's the, the the guy, uh, the speaker. Hey, Corey, could you just leave the Zoom on so that we could all network after?" <laughs> <laughs> right? So uh, yeah, I, I oh man, lots of positivity here. I'm excited for a static link, hopefully, and and all this other stuff to come to make it to scale the events, right? We hear yeah, fabulous. So, so. And it's, it's uh, you know, the, the idea here is to facilitate, in a way, to make it more fluid yeah. for people, and by doing that, to accelerate as well the development of Tucan. And so one one thing that, you know, if you wanted to fully digitize a networking event, I noticed that professional events, I was mentioning that an optimized, you know, networking circle is like five, six people, whichever, but after the conversation, they'll break off and they'll exchange hands, or they'll handshake mm -hmm. and send a business card to each other. Yeah. So as you mentioned, if you have like a LinkedIn, if you integrate LinkedIn, whoever they network and then give them like, hey, you network with this person today. It's kind of like lunch club, right? When I'm mm -hmm. on lunch club, after I have a meeting, it all records in my history like, oh, I met this person before. And then okay. I can see like, oh, who did 100 meetings and all that. So uh, uh, I guess a semi-CRM system for the person who attended that ties back to their LinkedIn, Google, or Facebook would be a powerful concept as well. Yeah, because actually what happens, and that happened a few times on, you know, actually in the Tucan social, is that you meet new people, and then it is very often that just after the meeting, either I receive an invite on LinkedIn or I yeah. send an invite on LinkedIn, right? Yep, yep. Very often. So if we were facilitating this and say, and, you know, anyone you meet on Tucan, in the same way as you meet, you know, face to face, you can just link quickly, which basically expand your network and recreate actually that element. Yeah. You know, all all mm -hmm. of that is about how we make uh, Toucan in a way more integrated and more pervasive. Mm -hmm. way I've also been in groups where, I mean, now that we have this group messaging feature, I've been in groups where people have exchanged social media handles just right then and there and just said, you know, yeah. here all of you come find me on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. It, it, see, that's so we, we were, we're talking about two different 
uh, cultures here, right? One is on the professional side of like, how can I follow up with your LinkedIn? And then on the other side of things, like the social media side of things, it's like, what's your handle? Yeah. You know, like hashtag this or at, at you know, at enterprise guy. Uh, on the professional side, it's like, what's your LinkedIn? Sure. But you're right. It's it, it's an element that is very much needed across both uh, you know producer and consumer events. I, I realize the the host factor. If you kind of that, I guess that is your your main customer at the end of the day. And if you put as much a lot of love into that that customer and you empower them to succeed and grow their community, it's like a it's just like a nice synergy between yeah. them, everyone. Yeah. I and, oh sorry, but. I actually lied. I have one last question really quick, um, which is, do you have any advice that you would give to hosts, whether, you know, it is that they, they want to become super hosts or yeah. whether um, it's the case that they've never hosted a Toucan event before. Yeah. What yeah, 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 advice yeah. would you have for them? Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I guess you could say I'm a pretty seasoned host, whether it be in-person or digital events at this point, but I mainly lean more on the in-person. The best advice that I could have, that I could give out for any host is, um, you know, hosting events is actually, like the things that we kind of care about is like the simplicity, the number of attendees, and then how much they like it, the engagement part. Mm -hmm. And I think the Toucan tool has really assisted me well in all of that. So my advice for the host is, you know, let's say on the competition side, uh, you know, more and more people are going to be leveraging more tools and all that to kind of develop engagement with their audience. Uh, so my take is, you know, this is a great tool right now for hosts to leverage and engage with their target market because, I mean, Zoom Zoom can only go so far. I, I get it. Every it's a it's it's a habit for everyone to use, but you want to connect deeper with your audience. So my advice is if you want to take your relationships to an even deeper level, I think this is the tool where it's like very natural and it shows that you care about your community versus just a one to many uh, Zoom style meeting all the time. So my my advice is uh, yeah, just use Toucan. I, I say use Toucan and uh, and reach out to me anytime if you if you need any help. Like I, I, I could talk a lot about this platform. I just I don't want I don't want I don't want to go everyone's time and talk all day. That's, that's my thing. No, it's, that's it's beautiful. You Thank that. you. Yeah, yeah. Well, so 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 glad you love it. We'll, we'll carry on making it even better. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's, that's what I'm really excited about. Like ah, uh, I I, I want to let's see. Like, what other advice can I give to founders out there? Oh, I'm sorry, not founders, to uh, other event hosts out there. I'm trying to think. Just engage with your audience. That's that's the key thing in this new digital economy mm -hmm. business landscape. And this is the tool to engage. This is one of the rising tools in the influencer stack. Because as a host, you are an influencer and you just don't know it yet. Yeah. As an emerging host. Beautifully put. Um, Kay, I, I really appreciate your time and thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you for hosting so many events and for being such an advocate for Toucan. It was a delight and pleasure to hear about how Toucan is, has made your life and also your, your guests and your community's lives better. Um, as you know, as always reach out with anything and i hope to see you on thursday oh yeah i'm there i try my best to come every thursday you'll you'll definitely oh see i know me. i know and, and thank you as well Antonio. <laughs> and thank you as well. <laughs> of course okay, all right be well <laughs>